Well, let's uh, get underway on uh, this auspicious day. Uh, thank you all for attending. I'm uh, so pleased to see so many happy, smiling faces. Uh, I was going to say around the table, but we're still virtual, so <laughs> at your desks and on our screens. Um, in terms of uh, the agenda, it's, uh, it's on our screen uh, right now. I just wanted to quickly uh, give you the, uh, the update. For those of you that haven't meet, met me yet, I think there's a couple there. Uh, I'm Dwight Mahalitz, Chair of ICMCI. I'm just, uh, just delighted uh, to be here today and uh, to welcome you on behalf of uh, ICMCI. Uh, in a few minutes, I'll give you some uh, opening remarks, as I typically do at hub meetings, and uh, just to set the scene and give you some of the observations that we have learned over the past, uh, well, years, uh, but more particularly what uh, has come to pass uh, and been accentuated as a result of uh, the pandemic over the last 18 months. Um, the, uh, we'll then uh, have some institute updates, and uh, this is about a 10 to 15 minute update from, uh, from each of you. You see the order there. This is quite a random order, uh, but we're very interested in hearing what's happening in your institute, or for those of you that are in formation, uh, what's, uh, what's happening in terms of uh, your, uh, your uh, setting up your institute, and uh, some of the issues that you're facing, some of the, uh, some of the uh, breakthroughs you've made, and some of the uh, things that we should be celebrating together. So it's a sharing information topic. Time. Um, that should take us about halfway through uh, our session, maybe a bit more. We'll, uh, we'll then uh, have uh, a break uh, just so that we can all refresh our coffee cups or, or whatever refreshment you're having at your time of day. And then um, uh, the, the last part of the session is really a facilitated discussion. And, and this is around how do we uh, work with our management consulting colleagues in, in the rest of the continent? How do, we, how do we outreach? How do we ensure that uh, our profession is as visible as possible uh, in Africa? And, and, and what are some of the uh, perhaps action steps that we should put in place. And then I'll just try to summarize that. It says final speech, but really it's, it's uh, just kind of a summary of, of where we're at and, and, and where we're going uh, forward. So quite an open session, an informal session. Uh, I think it's, it's amazing. Uh, this is the first time uh, since <clears throat> I've been associated that in the same year we've had a hub meeting on each of the continents. And I guess that's probably the... Um, uh, part of the uh, silver lining of the pandemic because of our virtual format, we're able to, uh, we're able to do that. So if you could uh, stop the share screen, uh, please, Hosema, and I'll, I'll just jump in with, uh, with my opening remarks. And then we'll get into the, uh, into the opening uh, part of the agenda. Uh, it's, um, well, first of all, I, I did welcome you uh, in, in my first comments, and I'd, I'd like to uh, reiterate that, that, uh, that I'm just uh, so pleased that you can all be here. And I'd also like to uh, formally bring you greetings on behalf of the board. And some of our board members are here and have joined us, and, and we'll hear uh, from them in, in the open uh, discussion as well. Uh, we do have a special agenda today, and I, I think thinking about how we improve our reach into the profession anywhere in the world is, is a really, really important discussion for us to have. Uh, so I'm so pleased that uh, each of you have seen fit uh, to give us time out of your day uh, to come together to share information from your perspective and for us to, uh, to discuss about uh, the growth of our institutes and the growth of the uh, management consulting uh, profession. So it's, uh, it's been quite a ride over the last 18 months. It's, it's been a very busy time for us at ICMCI. Uh, we've been working with all of the institutes. Uh, we've been working hard to build uh, collaboration and to figure out how we can do more uh, to ensure that we're all working together uh, for our common benefit. Um, so it's been a challenging time, but that's also brought us opportunities. Uh, so in spite of the pandemic, or I, I think actually probably because of uh, the pandemic uh, and the travel restrictions that came with that, we have pressed ahead uh, more than ever with the virtualization of our services. And it's created opportunities for networking and for collaboration uh, that we've never had before. And Particularly, we've never had it before at the consultant level, where consultants from around the world are able to join in uh, at meetings and conferences and events at any other part of the world. And we at ICMCI have been in closer contact uh, with our colleagues uh, at the management consulting level than, than we ever have. And personally, I've been at more workshops and more events around the world than I would have ever anticipated that I could have been uh, in 2019. 
Um, in preparing for the hub meetings, I, I thought back and, and particularly thought back to our face-to-face -face annual meeting in Nassau, Bahamas in, in 2019. And we talked then that, that consulting was entering a state of disruption. And, and, and we, we, we believed then uh, that, that consulting, uh, our ability as, as the profession would need to think outside of the box in order to really continue our growth and to create a situation uh, where the management consulting profession has the visibility that it actually deserves. Uh, the pandemic has really emphasized the changing way that client organizations think about professional services. And this is not just management consulting professional services, uh, but all of the professional services. And COVID has accelerated the change of work in so many different ways from, uh, from work at home uh, to the emerging uh, hybrid uh, model for, for staff organizations. And it's also accelerated the, the way that, uh, the changes to the way that client organizations think about how and when they use professional consulting services. And that one is really important for us. So on that one, I just wanted to give you four insights in terms of, of that changing marketplace, if you will, from the perspective of the client organizations. The first is that, that clients are thinking less and less about big ticket projects, and they're more thinking about how do we implement change in bite-sized pieces? Uh, how do we do this ourselves? And if we don't have the expertise inside, who is the best situated person? Who can I hire from outside our organization that has that skill set, that has that specialized expertise that we can bring in to help us solve the problem, but also someone that we can have to stick around with us to walk that last mile, to have that willingness to help us implement a solution in a, in a sustainable way. So I think this, this orientation is, is, is good for us in terms of, of the small and, and mid-sized and, and even some of the larger firms. And if even you look at, at the way that the large firms, the big uh, consulting firms are setting themselves up now, they're working very much more in, in a modular format. So, so it, it's, it's, it's a different way of thinking about projects, but it's, it's not a bad way. It's, it's just one that we need to adapt to. The second major thing that's happening that's impacting us is, is access to knowledge. It's greater than it has ever been. Uh, this, uh, this concept of augmented intelligence, this computer that we carry around in our hands throughout the day uh, is here to stay and it's going to continue to get better. So it means that access to knowledge from, uh, from our client organizations is greater than ever. And as a result, they feel less, rely, less reliance on professional organizations uh, than, they did, uh, than they did previously. So, so this is, this, this is uh, again, creates a situation where the Institute, which used to be the body of knowledge for the profession, are increasingly perceived not to be so. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's simply about, uh, about what knowledge can the client organization get in a timely way that they need to get. It also has an impact on, on new entrants into the profession. People who, who feel that they want to be consultants uh, also feel that they can get knowledge uh, in other situations and from other places without having to join the, uh, the Institute. So this becomes a really important factor for us. Uh, the, third, the third impactor on us is, is this access to networking. And this is also driven by, uh, by digitization and the social networks that are out there. So individuals anywhere in the world can reach out and connect to anyone else anywhere in the world. So that's really good for, for individuals who want to connect to each other, but it does create additional pressure for institutes as well, because again, the institute used to be that focal plate point where people can come together uh, to join with each other and, uh, and to share information, but that perception of the institute being the place to do that is starting to break down. The fourth area is, uh, is, is around perceived availability of talent uh, versus professional management consultants. Uh, on the internet now, I, I read a recent study, there's over 330 uh, significant websites, portals, which offer uh, specialized expertise to organizations. So they match expertise to, to, uh, uh, to those who, uh, they match those who are selling expertise to those who want to buy expertise. Uh, and many of, many of these 330 say that they are selling consulting services. 
Now, you and I know that they're not really consultants. Maybe some of them are consultants, but mostly they're people that are retired or between jobs uh, or want to get a little bit of extra cash. So they're selling some of their specialized expertise, but not necessarily within the framework of uh, what it means to be the deliverer of professional management consulting services. So this creates a threat to our, our status as, as trusted advisor and puts pressure upon us to really reinforce with client organizations the difference between someone who is selling specialized services and someone who is a professional management consultant. So I call this the Uberization of consulting. And this is, this is something we need to be aware of and, and to adapt to and uh, to accommodate because clients do want this kind of expertise uh, easily available to them. Uh, we also know from, from various studies that, that there are increasing numbers of individuals that are entering the industry of consulting. But because of these factors that I'm talking about, um, the access to knowledge, the easy available, easier availability to, uh, to network, the role of the Institute as the professional home of the industry of consulting is, is under threat. Now, to me, uh, this thinking is, is really counterproductive. In times like these, when we have an increasing, piece of, uh, increasing pace of change and increasing threats of disruption from multiple sources, institutes have a critical role to play. To me, an increasingly critical role to play. This ability to network, uh, to share experience and ideas, uh, to improve on best practices, uh, to be able to keep abreast of the latest changes, all these require some kind of a mechanism, a system such as the Institute to bring uh, consultants together. Now, what exactly an Institute is, uh, how exactly we, we demonstrate our, uh, our, our value added services that we're providing, how we, how we brand ourselves with these new entrants into the profession. I think these are all open questions. Uh, there's no question that the word Institute doesn't resonate the way it does. So, so we need to be uh, keeping our mind open about how we position ourselves with our target markets. Uh, but this doesn't mean that we're less important or less relevant. We just need to ensure that we can somehow create that understanding of the relevance and that understanding of the value that we can bring to, uh, to those who want to enter uh, the profession of consulting. So our challenge really is to demonstrate to new entrants and existing members that we can create that value for them. And, and how we do that is really going to require a lot of the out of box thinking, out of the box thinking. So I'm really here, looking forward to hearing what you have to say and how you're uh, approaching it on the African continent. So I'm always excited when our best thinkers come together at events like these to share information and to think about how we can improve our reach as consultants and as institutes and, and in whichever other ways that we can uh, possibly imagine. Uh, just before I close uh, a PS, uh, do set a time, time aside in your calendar for our annual meeting. Uh, it's on October 14th this year. Uh, we have two sessions, uh, one at 7 a.m. UTC and one at 1400 UTC. So you can choose whichever one's better for your calendar. Uh, we're lining up uh, a series of interesting speakers between those two sessions. So, uh, so kind of keep as much of that uh, time free as you can, because I think it's going to be a great day. And I'm looking forward to seeing as, as many of you uh, as possible at those, uh, those virtual sessions. So, so that's enough from me. Uh, let's get on with the uh, with the agenda. I'm really looking forward to uh, to hearing from others. So um, so uh, let's leave it, it in this gallery view so that we can see each other as we're talking to each other. I think this is the great way to do it. And um, we did circulate in advance an agenda. And uh, I don't have my green screen on today, so uh, <laughs> it doesn't see the white paper as white paper. <laughs> so there you go. Um, so, um, so we, uh, we did distribute the agenda and we've got a list there, which is kind of a random list of who will uh, speak when. And uh, South Africa is, uh, is up first. Uh, so for 10 to 15 minutes, if you could give us a bit of an overview of, of uh, the consulting profession from your perspective and, and what some of the things that are happening in South Africa now. I'm not sure which of you will, uh, will speak, uh, but um, please, uh, please go ahead now. I think I'll just make some opening remarks to Okay, Kieran, thanks. Welcome. Rest of the guys can jump in as they as they want to. I think when we last had a discussion like this, we we clearly stated that the consulting market, which obviously relies on its client base, was adversely affected by the pandemic. Okay. 
Now, most of you might have seen on your on your news screens and on your television screens that South Africa has recently over the past week and a half experienced uh, riots and looting and random acts of terrorism on key infrastructure. Now that on top of a third wave of COVID um, has exacerbated the financial impacts on every single part of the, the, the commercial enterprise in South Africa. So key value chains, supply chains, et cetera, have been affected. Shortages of, 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 of essential goods and services are now expected. Communities are rallying together to, to service um, these challenges. Um, and today I've just read that 40,000 loaves of bread and 40,000 liters of of uh, milk have been now uh, distributed to the province of KwaZulu Natal, which has been very badly affected. So, given this kind of market that we are in in South Africa, um, the financial sustainability of the IMCSA is further called into question. Key clients, as you mentioned, um, Dwight, the first thing they would cut is is, is consulting services. And that if that's from public sector through to private sector. Um, I think the other key issue is given, given the accessibility to, to, to knowledge bases that are out there uh, for these clients to access, um, they would probably use that more or try and figure out a way through the, through the current challenges. Now, I don't know how long this stuff is going to last, but certainly the impacts are going to be at least for, uh, for a year or two uh, in this country. Um, so trying to, trying, to, trying to operate in a market like this is very difficult. Um, all our clients are affected, okay? Consultants, uh, the, 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 the pipeline for work has been severely impacted. So the financial sustainability across the board um, is, is, is quite constrained. Um, so in that kind of market as an institute um, operating in a market like that, the, the, the only way in which we can possibly survive is to leverage some of the local expertise out into the international market and collaboration and networking becomes extremely important for us. And offering that service as the, the Institute of Management Consulting of South Africa becomes even more important. In fact, most of our people have said that if my skills are internationally acceptable and transferable, being part of an institute that has international reciprocity is very important for us. And as a result of which, should we move out of this country and go elsewhere, um, we would see that as an important, um, you know, important point in terms of the credibility of our skills. So in essence, we are getting people from Africa coming into South Africa trying to access the consulting market and getting their, um, getting their accreditation through the IMCSA so that it gives them credibility or gives African consultants credibility to work in the South African market. But South African consultants are doing that to a certain extent uh, for the local market, but they see their future outside in the overseas markets. Um, the ability to use technology in a compromised physical safety environment. Um, I think there would be very few people who would be willing to continue like that. And those who have transferable skills will move out. Mm -hmm. So in that kind of environment and in that kind of situation, the question becomes, what is the role of the IMCSA then? Okay. Um, from a certified management consultant perspective, I feel 
that um, there is most definitely a key role to play to help our members, future members in Africa and our local members to position themselves in a way appropriate for themselves. Okay. Because with uh, international reciprocity, they would probably go to one of the first world countries and just link up with their local institute there. Um, but from a financial sustainability point of view, we are very constrained um, over here in, in South Africa. I don't know if Angelo and the rest of the guys want to add something. Thank you. Thank you. We'll just add one thing. Um, even our board members are, are in a position where they are unable to pay their dues, which are calculated at about a third of our competitive nations worldwide. So we have very low dues and we have to actually sponsor them so that we don't lose them as active members but we're getting no revenue. For it. Uh, you'll excuse my voice because as you can see, I'm still in my dressing gown recovering from COVID. But uh, the, the real problem is income. People see value. And the other thing I must say is that uh, the ICMCI um, has become a, a serious overhead to our activities uh, from a, a standards, audit, information gathering, webinars, all those kind of things. We can't attend all these things. We can't even attend the local um, South African Qualification Authority meetings that are mandatory for us to retain our local certification. Um, so I have to point out that the small institutes crippled when it comes to volunteers and members. And that's about all I can say before I run out of voice. I'm sorry to hear about your uh, illness, Angelo. I hope uh, I wish you a speedy recovery. You're you're feeling better and uh, on on the way. On good, excellent. Thank you, and thanks for being here, <laughs> even in your dressing gown. I appreciate it. Um, okay, um, so um, I appreciate that, and 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 I appreciate the uh, the uh, transparency and the. Uh, and, and the, um, you know, bringing the serious message to us in the way that you have this is uh, this, um, what it needs to be said, it needs to be said. So thank you for that. Um, and we'll be coming back to uh, sort of the general discussion on these things uh, at the end, but let's hear from all of the institutes first. So we'll move to Nigeria uh, next, Who, who's representing from Nigeria? Good afternoon. Hi, Colad. How are you? Okay. So, so who 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 will uh, who will address us in terms of what's happening in Nigeria? I will. I will. Okay. Go ahead, please. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's nice to see all of us on this platform, and uh, I'm pleased to be here. In Nigeria, the situation isn't too different from what is happening globally, so to speak, because since the advent of uh, the pandemic, we've also had a lot of challenges. Challenges in the area of bringing people together for seminars, for uh, programs, for things like that. Uh, the challenge also is in the area of income, in the area of income, getting people to renew their annual subscriptions and uh, also trying to get them to buy in into these trainings and the seminars, particularly the international ones too, like the one we had in Bahamas in 2018 before the uh, COVID and things like that. So it has not been so easy, sorry, in 2019, Bahamas in 2019, to get people to participate in international programs and things like that. Also, um, we, but however, however, we are grateful to God for the interest because doing something like a SWOT analysis 
something like the SWOT analysis, the opportunities open to us as an institute is quite large because in this particular part of the world, a lot of people are interested in having certification. There is the interest in having certification. And so a lot of people write us, sometimes people direct their mails to ICMCI directly and the mails are sent back to us so that we can contact them. But so that's say the market is quite ripe. A lot of people want to be trained. A lot of people are interested in the training, but because of the current situation, and also sometimes when they are aware of the what it entails financially, they key in initially, but getting them to renew subsequently is not so easy. It's not so easy. However, however, we are exploring all avenues. Now with the vaccine, a lot of people are key in, into having the vaccine. And so we can start doing programs again uh, physically, but not at the capacity we could hold them before. You have a hall that can take like 200 people. Now you cannot assemble more than maybe 75 because of social distancing. And so uh, gradually, we are picking up again. Gradually, we are picking up again. Now, for the way forward, for the way, oh, sorry, another challenge is a lot of people here are concerned about the Institute being chattered, being chattered, having government regulation and things like that. But that is not the ultimate because I think globally, we have just about two of us who are are chartered, I think the one in uh, Austria also, IMC Austria that's chartered, but um, that's not too much of a challenge, but that is one of the basic things people want to know. Is the institute chartered? Is the institute this? Is the institute that? But one of the, another uh, good quality we have is affiliation to ICMCI, which places us at an international level, an international standard, an international quality. So that speaks volumes for IMC Nigeria. Then on the way forward, we are thinking of looking for how we can get a lot of people to appreciate us. And so we're doing all manners of publicity online and offline so that people can really know about the Institute people can really know about the Institute. And the core focus, the core focus, like uh, you mentioned right earlier, is to make uh, people seek for professional standards, professional standards as consultants. A lot of people refer to themselves as consultants on their business cards, on their letter-headed paper, on their websites, but at the end of the day, you get to deal with them and what you get is not uh, good enough. It's not good enough. And so our concern as an institute at the forefront of management consulting in Nigeria and Africa as a whole is to train people. So we are planning a lot of training programs where people will be able to uh, sit under our training, get to know the basics of management consulting get to know the basics of what they need to do, what they need to know, how to set their fees, how to, how to package themselves, even up to the extent of teaching them how to write a quality business proposal. Mm -hmm. We need to promote, we are promoting all sorts of things and to also get them to know about the international standards stipulated by ICMCI and work in line with those levels so that anywhere you are globally, you are at par. You are at par mm -hmm. with uh, management consultants globally. So basically, those are the areas we are trying to uh, work on. Because our vision, our mission is to create, to maintain, and then to extend consulting practice in Nigeria. The standards of consulting practice in Nigeria, professional standards. So we want to create the awareness. We also want to uh, maintain the standard 
and also to build on it, make it better mm -hmm. all around Nigeria and possibly even outside Nigeria through our programs, people who can connect with us and things like that. So basically, that is the situation in Nigeria. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, just one uh, one uh, question uh, for to make sure we're using words in the same way or that I understand. Uh, you, you when you referred to uh, the chartered status, I think you mean um, where the country is regulating the profession so that anyone who wants to be a consultant must must register with you. Okay, very good, perfect. Thank you, thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much for that overview. I, I appreciate that. And uh, yes, the eye on the future and what we can do is, is really important. So we will come back to all of these points. So anyone that has questions for anyone, make sure you make a note of them for when we come back together. Uh, Zimbabwe is next on our list. Uh, Zimbabwe, one of our newer members. Congratulations. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Dred. Um, nice to see you again, Namrat. Thank you, thank you. Um, we've had a very long journey. But uh, first, before I say anything, I would like to thank Angelo and, the, and also Kiran for, you know, working with them for a very long time and, uh, and which has made us really a much better place maybe than if we if we had not been linking with them and also the english you know and also uh, imc uk as well uh, i think working with them has helped us in terms of being able to draw back and say okay fine how do we want to structure our institute uh, which maybe if we had not done that maybe would not be where we are today um, yes, we've got the problem of, of COVID. Uh, lucky enough, um, our government managed to be quite quick on it and started vaccination at a very early stage. And, and, and that has given a lot of people confidence that yes, yes, it is there, but you need to take precautions and still be able to go back to do some work. So a number of consultants have actually started going, you know, doing work, which I think is quite good in the sense that, but also, but funny enough, in a different way this time. Uh, whereas before, I think there's a lot of more of business development, purely because organizations are in a new situation, they and they need assistance from consultants in terms of say, how do we get out of this mess we are in because of COVID? So we see, I think the the market of uh, management consulting services going up you know in that direction uh, which was a bit different you know from what we used to have before uh, i mean it's it's so strange now that you actually get a client phoning you <laughs> say can you know can you can you can you help us uh, and, and i think also at the same time i think it's also because of the reputation i think that the, the consultants that are here, I think they've been doing a very good job to the extent that uh, some of the clients, you know, I mean, you know, they actually call for you. Um, so COVID has made us to change the way we need to approach business. Yes, there are some colleagues that maybe got stuck uh, purely because maybe of their networks, but I think we've been encouraging colleagues to network so that at least they can help each other out of that. Now, one other aspect, I think we were fortunate in the sense that um, we had a revision of our strategy just at the time when, when actual COVID started. <laughs> so our strategy took into, into consideration the new way of working, uh, different approaches to what we, we have been doing in the past, and, and, and that has kind of like helped, I think, a number of our members in terms of refocusing. And uh, to which is which I think was quite good in the sense that you know, it, you know, it, it, it availed them with the opportunity of being say, okay, fine, I was doing this, but how do I now need to approach this? And we are fortunate that out of all our members, we have got, we, we say, I think we've got about 95% who have paid, paid their subscription. 
And the, you know, the other five, I'm sure they will be finalizing their views at any minute. So we have been fortunate out of that. But purely also because I think as an institute, we tried our best in terms of being able to reshape. To say we are in this situation, how can we help each other? Uh, linked into that, we also, as part of our strategy, we also took the advantage of saying we need to look at our stakeholders. So we, we've got what we call a natural business, can, you know, a, 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 you know, a natural business model canvas, where we took note of all the stakeholders that we've got. Where we also, you know, we also looked at the various, the various activities that we need to do. We looked at the value propositions, you know, as an institute, and so we looked at, we looked at our customer segments. We also looked at in terms of the key resources that we have. And of course, the channels of how we are going to be able to relate with all these people. And out of that, to say, okay, fine, where are we going to get our revenue? And it looks like that is, that is beginning to work well. That is beginning to work well. And as a result, it has also helped, I think, in terms of helping our members to, to, to actually make sure that they put bread on their, you know, on, you know, on their table. Uh, it can be better, but you can see that I think business is actually growing now than maybe last year. There's been an improvement uh, that you hardly get time where you say, you, you know, you have no work to do. <laughs> Although obviously the volumes are not as great in terms of from, from a value point of view, not as great as what it used to be where you get big contracts, not anymore. They are small, but at least they will make you survive. And as a result of that, um, in terms of the key stakeholders, uh, we found that I think it helped quite a lot. One of the key stakeholders is actually government, which where we get most of the contracts. We approached them more in terms of selling the institute and also selling the CMC brand. And we were quite surprised that we had quite a well, you know, a very good welcome. And we also, you know, and also came up with an arrangement to say, how can we work together? in terms of conscientizing uh, professional management consulting in the country for those that are going to provide the services to government uh, organizations. So as a result of that, uh, this is like about 12 months ago. Uh, so you find that some of the contracts that are coming out now, they will now ask a question, are you a member of a professional, you know, professional management consulting firm, so, you know, body? So that is kind of like forcing now people to say, hold on, I need to be a member of the institute. <laughs> so as a result of that, we, we all of a sudden we have started getting now a lot of inquiries. And also Rima, thank you so much for pointing out some of those people to us. <laughs> uh, so that is helped a lot in terms of uh, us being known and also them being known that knowing that there's also ISMCI. That stands, you know, as the global body for, you know, for the you know, for the issues around the, around the world. Uh, so from our survey, apart from government, we also looked at professional bodies. Uh, lucky enough, a number of our members also belong to other professional bodies. So it made it much easier in terms of being able to link with them, you know, as a key stakeholder, whom we need to work with. So that let's work out, is, you know, to say, if they're a member of this body, how, you know, how do we work out together in terms of, uh, if they are our members. Some professional bodies do also do consultants and say, okay, fine. That is from a technical, from an expert point of view, but how do you do it from a professional point of view? So we are working with some of those professional bodies to say, how can we work together so that a person is able to get accredited to some of the work that they do from their own professional body. Another area also stakeholder, which we have done extremely well is in terms of tertiary institutions. Uh, universities, uh, where we are also making arrangements in terms of working together, coming up with the postgraduate uh, programs for management consulting. And again, that has been received very well. So we are working with about two universities at the moment to more do like a, like a pilot, which helps now in coming up what we call the, the common board of knowledge for the universities. And also we have uh, we have also been in touch with the regulatory board of tertiary institutions, 
which recognizes that whatever postgraduate degree that's going to be done, it, if it's going to have management consultant, we have to be satisfied as, you know, as Zenik that it meets the minimum requirements of our side. So that development is, all, is also working on very well in terms of that. And with the state universities, we got blessings from the, you know, from, from, from government, private universities as well, they are very keen to be able to do that. Uh, then one other area that we are also looking at is in terms of the funding partners. Uh, funding partners are, are very important because normally funding partners would fund a public a project. So we are saying they need to know that there's ICMCI. They need to know that when you say the professional consultant, you have CMC. So we are having that discussion again, which we think, uh, you know, over time is going to go a long way in terms of our members being given priority when tenders are being awarded out of that. Uh, so in terms of, uh, again, to make sure that we, we are in touch with our members, we've also come up with what we call an events calendar uh, where each month there is something that we actually get on uh, in terms of uh, our members. We also have got special interest groups as well, like women in management consultants, uh, where, which, is a, which is an area where the public sector is very much interested in because there is a bias in the moment, at the moment in terms of saying, you also need to capacitate ladies. So that is coming up as well. And we have started coming up with chapters. We have got our first chapter, and uh, which we had, uh, you, at on board meeting last week, very interesting enough. Just the first one with actually over 25 people that attended that, you know, uh, you know, that on board meeting. So, so in a way, I think we, over the next three years, we'll be looking at maybe coming up with the two or three chapters. And that should be able to boost our, you know, to actually increase our membership. I think that's all I thought I would share with you. Thank uh, you very that, much. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, congratulations on all those initiatives that you have underway. So it's uh, <laughs> casting the seeds. So that's uh, very good. I appreciate that. Um, and again, I remind everyone, uh, take note of any questions that uh, anyone that might have for others when we come to the open table session. So. Uh, uh, we don't have a representative from Algeria today. Um, I was talking with Rima about that just now on chatting and uh, his main language is French. And I think he might've been a bit uncomfortable with, uh, with the English uh, language here. So uh, was not able to attend today, um, but uh, we will be recording this. So we will make it available to them. Uh, Kenya is next on our list. Uh, Kenya, Eric. Uh, there you are. Hi, Eric. Would you uh, know this is uh, this is a little different. This is uh, an institute in formation. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's happening and uh, where you're going with the institute? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, glad to meet all these new faces, um, except a few that I think I know. Rima is a close friend because she visited us down. Um, here in Kenya, I've been in constant communication with a few of um, the senior guys in the business, Angelo, Constance, and I think I've been enjoying the support. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's a privilege for us to be invited today uh, to participate in this meeting as non-members, but aspiring to join the global body of management consultants. Uh, thanks to the support of RIMA and uh, the push for us to actually do things right and um, find ourselves become delegates or members of the, the global body. Um, however, I think I, I, I share the same sentiments of the rest of us that COVID has really affected how you operate and um, uh, the, the bit of acceptance of uh, being members of uh, what we call Management Consulting Consultant Association of Kenya simply because uh, it has a cost to it. But for someone to become a member, they have to apply, they have to pay a membership fee. So you, you will appreciate that Kenya started this journey uh, two years ago, 
uh, that was in 2019 that uh, Rima joined us to launch. And um, in 20, end of that year, in, actually in December, COVID started. And um, immediately 2020 was, a, I think, a year that most of us would want to forget in our calendars, but sadly we did not forget it. So uh, most consultants struggled through 2020. And um, I'm glad to say that the formation of um, Management Consulting as, uh, Consultant Association of Kenya came as a result of like-minded individuals, 10 of us sitting somewhere together and I convincing them that we need to actually operate within a framework that would promote management consultancy and delivery of consultancy services in Kenya. It's because we realized that there was a huge gap and this gap was mainly, I think, what I think Collagex will talk about, that people want to, con to consult, but they really don't understand how they consult. The quality is really lacking. And I want to share the same sentiment of um, uh, my brother, uh, Manyora from, uh, Gonyora from uh, Zimbabwe, that very many people call themselves consultants. It's a title. They have it in their business cards. They sign off like that. But really, if you look at how they deliver the quality, um, they need to be uh, to be trained or more so uh, upskilled, and um, that is the reason why we chose to form MCAC. We call it MCAC, and um, where we are right now, we have um, constantly the constant faces, the eleven of them, uh, and then good news is that we have eighty on a standby. So these eighty consultants are in. Um, a group, you know, grouping, they keep, we, we want to keep them warm so that the moment we decide even to lower our fees for them to join in, in mass, we want to start thinking of how then do we start the process of becoming um, qualified members of ICMCI. Um, we had a very good blueprint on how we want to become members. Actually, this was the year when we wanted to become full members of ICMCI because that was within our plan. Sadly, um, our, our plans were a little affected uh, by COVID and the, COVID, the effects of COVID in terms of um, our members getting constant jobs. And I share with the rest of the team uh, that um, so far it's looking better. Um, I think um, from the start of March of this year, we have seen a change in terms of how now customers procure services. It's changing from normal advertisement where people can apply to referral schemes. So your network becomes your network. And this is um, largely because there are so many brokers in between or people who have a lot of malpractice for them to get um, uh, employment opportunities. But if your quality speaks for yourself, then there's a likelihood of um, customers or clients actually asking around and then you, in your email, you just get an email requesting you to, to, to actually write, oh, we have a, an RFP here, could you please respond to this RFP? And it's because of the quality. And I think those who've bought that idea of working within specific frameworks, delivering in terms of quality, they have continued being in business. It, it is not in the right volumes that we all want, but again, I can tell you for sure, there's every single month, we invoice, but we invoice because we are building a, a name around best practices, good standards and quality. And we speak quality all through. We don't want shortcuts because for us and members that are close to the, um, the, the MCAC, we believe in one thing. If you use the right framework, if you maintain the best quality that you can give to your client, and if you can give the right advice, you, we don't decide for clients as a consultant. If we can give the right advice, then that client will be your number one marketer. That has helped majority of the team members. And uh, to the rest um, of the members who are just potential members, we want to sell that value to them. And where we are heading now is when things um, uh, stable up uh, a little bit, and then we want to continue with our events because our events went virtual. And I think one thing we've realized is that there's a fatigue in terms of um, uh, the general population of virtual events because there are several of them. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, once things get a little bit better, then we go to the contact meetings. 
we've spaced our virtual events um, right now as we speak. And those events uh, are what we use to sell MCAC. And we've seen um, good responses. Uh, we've even asked seen, uh, um, new applications coming in the last one week actually there's one application that came through which is being reviewed and we think we are in the right direction um, uh, the only thing that uh, i think we have lacked uh, uh, we, we have a little bit of some hiccups on is that even the volunteers volunteering is not an easy thing for a consultant who constantly is looking for money to feed his family and himself unless you have that passion very few people can volunteer their time and resources to actually make such a thing run. And I think um, it takes someone who has the vision, um, and actually this, this uh, being that I am the vision carrier, um, however tired uh, times I get, I have to run it and I have to rally people around me so that we actually leave a legacy because that is what we expect. Otherwise, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you much, very much, Eric. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's always exciting times to uh, to be starting a new institute, but lots of work. And in COVID times, <laughs> more and more difficult. So I can see why the one year horizon had to be spread out for sure. Uh, thank you for those updates. Uh, next on our agenda, we have uh, Zambia. Ephraim, I see you just turned on your camera. Are you the speaker for uh, for another institute in formation? Sorry, yeah, let me just okay. make, uh, get my mic on. You got it, yep. Yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, sure, thank you very much uh, for the discussion. And uh, it's been a very interesting and uh, very important learning points, especially for an institute like ours, which is just in its formative stages. Uh, well, I think to start with, I think I'd like to thank uh, Namrod, uh, and the Zimbabwean Institute, because uh, they have been very supportive of our efforts that thus far. And then uh, I think we also have uh, another member, uh, Modesta, who is based in uh, Botswana. So they have been very, very important in our first steps, and they've been encouraging. But uh, I think as is there as the experience with Kenya, I think our major challenge has been uh, the timing of when the spread of COVID came in, because that was the time when we were setting out. Uh, so we found ourselves in a situation where there were all these challenges, uh, firstly amongst the, the few people who came together to get this process off the ground, and then the potential stakeholders who we could uh, uh, approach and be supportive of this. So to start with our journey uh, as an institute uh, started in, uh, I think when the idea, uh, when we were made an, uh, aware of the institute uh, through Namrod, and then uh, Modesta also, we had a discussion. In fact, Namrod uh, mentioned Modesta to us because she's based in Botswana and we had a discussion. She traveled over to Zambia. And then we sat around and said, no, it would be a good idea to set up uh, an institute in Zambia. So that's how we got started. And we had our inaugural meeting uh, in March, 2020. And uh, Namrod was kind enough to travel over from Zimbabwe and uh, share with us their experience and uh, yeah, which was very, very encouraging and uh, very, very informative. So from there, we embarked on the journey of uh, getting to register the association with uh, the Registrar of Societies uh, in Zambia. So yeah, after the initial meeting, which was well, well attended, I think that we had something like uh, close to 30, 30 or so people around the table who expressed uh, interest, uh, you know, in belonging to such a professional organization. So we registered the, the association in September of uh, 2020. 
And then we set about uh, in uh, establishing the governance structures. So we, the initial part was uh, basically putting the building blocks, uh, writing out the constitution, setting out the governance structures and all that, which are a requirement uh, before you register with the uh, uh, registrar societies, putting together a constitution, which we all did. Uh, and uh, once that registration process was was in place, uh, we now set about to working through the various committees to try and put uh, to operationalize the institute. But then, uh, unfortunately, that was the time when also COVID was uh, setting in. So that set us back quite a lot because uh, getting suddenly people's attentions were. <laughs> Well, elsewhere. and unfortunately, I think the COVID situation had a heavy toll uh, in Zambia, such that uh, there was basically a lot of uh, disruptions to families, work, and all that. So people's attentions were driven to attending to other more urgent issues. Uh, and that actually has what has been holding us back because uh, uh, getting meetings in place, you know, sometimes you'd not be able to get sufficient numbers around the tables and uh, stuff like that. But uh, we still uh, continued uh, and uh, we've had, uh, we set ourselves to have at least a meeting every quarter. And uh, so we, since establishment, we had the first meeting in our first quarter and we had another one this last quarter. So basically, I think in terms of the formative stages, that is where we are. But uh, I think in terms of challenges, uh, I think like uh, the experience of Kenya, uh, for now it's this challenge of uh, you know volunteering because uh, people have not yet People practice management consulting. They do some consulting, but uh, they've not really come to appreciate the need for a professional body. So it's uh, getting people to appreciate uh, the need of a professional body. And then there's also the aspect of uh, volunteering. So we, find, we found ourselves in a situation where the initial group, which uh, identified with the vision, has uh, had to basically carry uh, the works on their shoulders uh, to the extent of you know paying paying the relevant fees to the registration fees uh, fees for venues from their pockets and uh, stuff like that yeah and then um, again for the counterparties uh, I think the problem is because of COVID uh, there's been constraints on their budgets. So you find that uh, even the opportunities, not really under the umbrella of uh, the association, but in our individual capacities, the business opportunities have kind of uh, been a bit constrained because budgets uh, for various companies have been uh, reduced because of reduced businesses. So. Yeah, so basically, I think that is where we stand, but uh, that notwithstanding, uh, the COVID situation right now, it's quite bad, but we foresee, I think probably, because this is the coldest part of the year, uh, and uh, the vaccination process, uh, program has kind of been ramped up. So we are hoping that uh, in the next uh, month or two, the situation uh, will be better. And then we should be able now to, to be up and running and uh, be able to engage our stakeholders uh, uh, fully. Yeah, and then thereafter, I think we see a brighter future. But uh, I think I need to mention and recognize 
the guidance, uh, which we still continue receiving from Mamrod and Modesta and Rema, actually, who we have been uh, engaging and uh, she's been uh, pointing us the way in terms of uh, how we need to proceed. So yeah, I think I'll end there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Yes, it's uh, it's difficult um, running an institute uh, in COVID times, and it's even more difficult to try to create one in COVID times. So uh, I thank you for that update uh, very much. Um, so uh, I would like to uh, invite now, uh, the next on our list is uh, the Global Institute. As you know, the, or maybe you don't know, I'll just say a word about it. Uh, the CMC Global Institute was uh, created uh, nine or 10 years ago. Uh, I've had the honor of being the chair of the Global Institute and, and now the past chair. And its, it's, uh, its role is to uh, create and uh, support uh, members of management consultants and to certify them in any country in the world where there is no existing institute. So it's a virtual organization and it enables us to offer our certification globally. So uh, when we talk about reciprocity and transferability, um, uh, having uh, an institute such as this one, which is virtual and operates in what we call the white spaces on the map. If you look behind uh, Husema there, uh, we can see that you've got the map, yes. Uh, so the gold are where there are institutes, the white is where, where uh, the CMC Global Institute operates. So uh, the chair, uh, Tamara, sent her, uh, her regrets that she was not able to attend, but Otto, who is our chair of professional development, is here. And I'd also like to uh, uh, thank Modesto, who I see is here, uh, who uh, was uh, a director of the board of the Global Institute for, uh, for some time and uh, was quite uh, instrumental in many of our initiatives, but I'll hand it over to you uh, now, Otto. Uh, thank you, Dwight, and um, welcome everyone. Uh, I, I had a, a very short, prom I promise not to bore you, uh, presentation to show uh, a couple of things. Uh, I don't know if, if I can share. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, you should be seeing my, my screen in full screen, right? Okay, so um, basically uh, as uh, Dwight the member and, and the chair and, and Modesta, uh, I'm, I'm delighted to have you both uh, that are GI colleagues as, as, um, as Dwight has already mentioned. Uh, basically what I had uh, for now is very quick, uh, the, same, the same that we were directed to, to share about. Um, as already, uh, Dwight mentioned, uh, our institute is the home for all of us, all of us that are uh, from a country perspective orphans uh, in terms of uh, not having a national institute in our geography. Uh, we span across four continents and have the difficulty that our members uh, span through a time zone difference of uh, up to 14 hours. So, so we don't have the tie to the geographical location and, and necessarily the local problems because the, the Institute was born uh, virtual from the start. <clears throat> um, by nature and because how we are, uh, we, we believe that we should not reinvent the wheel and we try to partner uh, and, and, and connect with the, every other IMC and, and, and we have volunteers from, uh, from different IMCs that collaborate with us, uh, and and they also it also provides an opportunity for networking for them. So we have people from you know of course members, but also people from other from other institutes who want to uh, network and, and collaborate with us. Um, as a virtual institute, we could have never operated in any other way that was not virtual. Uh, so we have uh, members located in Botswana, uh, in Costa Rica, in the Americas, in Latin America, Denmark, Egypt, all those countries that you see. And um, we also provide uh, CMC certification and credentials to um, uh, renewal services to provisional institutes. Those who are in the, in the trip of becoming a full institute and they are not still allowed to, to do their own uh, certification. The idea is that they develop until being completely autonomous. Um, challenges and opportunities. 
uh, we can never be close to anyone. Uh, we have members that have never met in person. Uh, I've never met Dwight in person or, or Modesta. It's all through the, through the screen. Uh, <clears throat> we run an organization that works in English. That is the official language. But our members uh, natively speak Spanish, English, French, Arabic, Romanian, uh, Georgian, etc., and with different, with uh, varied levels of command of English. So that in itself is a challenge also. Um, and I do think personally that challenges are opportunities at the end. So uh, we, from the start, rely heavily on technology across uh, to engage our own colleagues. Uh, COVID in, in the sense, in the traditional sense, did not affect us that much, uh, but we share with you that we have had problems for people to pay their dues. I think that that is worldwide because everyone, I don't know you, but in my practice, uh, I invoice probably less than 20% of what I used to uh, invoice in, in prior years. Um, we are highly developed in tech tools for e-learning and virtual collaboration that we are now deploying. Uh, and we have an ambassadors program that our colleague uh, Pamela Campagna has uh, started. Uh, we are starting in Egypt, Ghana, and Ethiopia to basically try to, uh, try to uh, leverage and promote the, the CMC brand uh, everywhere. Um, as I said, we are very high on technology. Um, as a learning asset or what we have already is uh, we we do um, we do a monthly uh, a monthly webinar that is uh, open to anyone that that goes uh, that that attends uh, free. So um, from now I I just say uh, anyone who wants to be in our list to be communicated of our webinars. Uh, our next one is next uh, next Wednesday. Uh, they are free to attend. And, uh, and you can uh, start getting involved. And, 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 and uh, also, we are starting uh, some other live online activities, such as uh, what we call a business generation club. This will also be uh, open to any other IMC member that wants to join. And uh, some shared practice sessions. We record everything and then upload it into an LMS, into a learning management system. Uh, that then uh, we offer it either at a very low cost, just basically to, to pay for the seat of the platform. Uh, and we have a course in ISO 2700 that we, of course, provide to our own members and uh, to any other member of an IMC who does not have uh, their own trainers yet. So we can also uh, provide or help you provide those services to, to your members. Um, <clears throat> and Dwight is our trainer for the for the ISO in English, and uh, he has done a superb job. Uh, we we did a, a first version, you know, a bit clumsy in the beginning because basically we were all learning about how best to deliver it. And he just uh, finished uh, a couple of months ago the the second edition, which is highly improved and is a, a very nice experience. Um, and we are rolling out. Uh, a collaborative environment that will provide that will provide our members with a you know a website, a video calls, work work groups for virtual social interaction, and even e-commerce. Um, I didn't have that plan, but hearing you throughout the presentations, uh, we will we will be doing a webinar probably in a month or two about all the different options that you have. To, uh, to have e-commerce or to charge clients virtually all over the world. Um, and, and I remember actually uh, something that Dwight told me, you know, with, with the difficulty of collecting money from, uh, from a client that is uh, outside your, your natural uh, geography. So, so we think uh, we can share some, some, some uh, tips on that. And we will also be sharing or we can share the how to you set up all this, uh, which many is without cost. For example, the, the collaborative environment doesn't have any cost. It's just you need to know how to do it and, and, and we can share how you can do it. 
Um, then uh, our future vision, try to provide value across all the consulting life, because usually in most of our countries and regions, uh, we have different people that for different reasons uh, is around consulting, you know, from, from the rookie or the MBA graduate that is trying to, uh, you know, do their first inroads to the very seasoned consultant who is actually thinking on how to close shop or sell it. Uh, so, so we are trying to cover uh, the needs of the different uh, types of personas. Um, and ideas for growth, which was the last uh, of, of, the, of the topics, uh, I would say, you know, in a virtual world, especially after the pandemic, collaboration, 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 you know, the, 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 it's only our intent what holds us because the technology is there already. Um, not trying not to reinvent the wheel, you know, because uh, sometimes we are all, most of us are small institutes with limited resources. Uh, so the collaboration provides a mean to do something that benefit everyone and that uh, we share the load, which many times is not money, it's just effort. Um, and uh, in our case, uh, we're trying to reframe the offer to our members uh, to be insensible to the new needs that Dwight already mentioned about uh, the younger generations which uh, don't see the value in the same place that we used to see it. Um, and uh, basically uh, try to tackle why they should care about joining us. Uh, and finally, uh, our pending work in, in, in our case is uh, trying to get each other uh, to, to, know, get, uh, to know each other better because of the virtual nature, uh, try to collaborate more and find synergies. For example, if you and your institutes have content or have trainers, but don't have the electronic means to, uh, to e-delivery those, we can partner with you as an institute to, to help you out. Uh, and, and of course, uh, to leverage the global brand of ICMCI. As an, you know, we are a, a one more institute, but uh, ICMCI, has the size of a mid-size global brand and consulting company. Uh, so if we get to leverage that brand and synergize the power of all of us, uh, we, know we can only uh, uh, work towards uh, some of the objectives that you have mentioned of work abroad. Uh, in a in a in a better way, all all the means are in place already, and that's all I had. Well, I appreciate uh, the effort uh, to put the presentation together. Thank you, and uh, for that overview of uh, of GI. Uh, I, your your closing point I really resonated with me. If if we think about each of our institutes, uh, we're we're uh, we, we each have challenges in front of us. But if we think of all of us together, 60,000 strong with, uh, with over 8,000 certified management consultants, we are equivalent to, uh, to a large uh, management consulting firm. We, there are great things that we can do by collaborating. So that's, that's amazing. Um, just before we move on, I, I'm going to ask Rima to give us some insight from the secretariat. <laughs> Uh, but before that, uh, from the board, uh, Soren is, well, was here. He's just stepped away. And Robert are two directors of the board. Just any comments from you from the ICMCI perspective? Robert, I'll uh, ask if you have anything. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank, thank you. That, that was a lot of, of, of input and a lot of information and a lot of background. And it helps a lot for us, I think, to discuss it in the board because you do have so different approaches. There is the very special situation in South Africa and there is another very spe special situation in Zambia or Kenya. So I think it's something um, that is, uh, despite to many other hubs that we have within the same hub, we do have different situation and we need to find a way how to handle this. Maybe this first hub is the initial hub meeting and it is one, the first one of a series of follow-up meetings and follow-up meetings where to share the different knowledge and the different 
services as CMCI is, is offering. We do offer a lot of services that are, in my understanding, maybe not 100%, but I would be sure it should be 99.9% of the right answer to the different questions that are raised. I'm thinking about all the different standards. You already mentioned 20,700, but we also have this, the 17 or 24, and of course the existing um, um, CMC certifications and so on and so forth. And uh, what we need to discuss is how to implement that and how to bring the IMCs in the situation to offer <laughs> these services to their members, because the IMCs are always those organizations that have the best services, the best connection to their members. And we as ICMs we can support. And that's the basic approach. We, we, the IMCs are connected to their members and ICMs is supporting maybe it's contributing a little bit, but, but it's just with regards to supporting and not, not doing their business because this is what the IMCs can do the best. So I, I really want to thank, say thank you. I don't have specific questions. I don't have a specific solutions for all the problems that are raised, but um, it, it brings us a lot of background and thank you for that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Soren, I was just uh, offering to directors of the board if they had any comments uh, before we moved on to Rima. I see you have to step away for a, for a moment, uh, but now that you're back, uh, anything you'd like to uh, share with uh, the members? Uh, thank you very much, Dwight. Sorry for leaving for one minute. Um, <coughs> what to say? It's uh, some people we had the chance to meet or to discuss or to. Uh, know a little bit. Uh, the others gave us a very good, a very good uh, overview of what's going on in in in, uh, in Africa. Uh, I always said that there is a big potential. The problem is how you are going to unleash all the things that can be done and and let them explore. Obviously, we cannot live without a. Um, a real good economic climate. Our profession is really <laughs> dependent on that. On the other hand, uh, hand I'm, I'm, I'm very much admiring their efforts to make our profession uh, well-known, accepted and useful in that part of the world. Remember, remember our vision and our objectives. And remember that always we said that uh, management consulting is not only about economic success, but it's also about social. And I think that whatever our colleagues said today, it's exactly in line with that. So I'm, I'm very happy to be part of this discussion. And uh, I'm very happy to say hello to all of them, the people that we ever met or the people that we never met. <laughs> Thank you very much, Soren, appreciate that. Rima is our executive director. Your name came up several times in our uh, reports today because I know that you're uh, you're busy coordinating all of us in, in our work. So um, so uh, over to you, please. Uh, well, the first thing I want to say, lovely to see you all. It's been a while since I saw some of you, but um, the work of the secretariat is kind of well known to everyone. We're the ones that offer support where we can whether it is to the board in order to implement the strategy, whether it's to the different committees that are the arm for implementation, whether it is to the different IMCs in making sure that what they need is catered for. Um, within the past eight years, I was able to tell that some IMCs have it harder than the others. Uh, some have smooth sailing, Some somehow uh, others need to actually work more and put more effort. And that applies to us at the secretariat, by the way, as well, because some IMCs just take what we offer and start implementing and get back to us with results. Others where uh, resources are a bit low and volunteering isn't that much yet common uh, at the IMC, then we need to support even more. So it's the same everywhere. It's the same all around. But what I can say on, on my behalf and maybe on Huzayma's behalf is that we enjoy supporting you all. We appreciate the fact that you're all volunteers. We appreciate the fact that um, you're putting, how shall I say it, your arms and necks out there in order to make sure that the vision of ICMCI does happen. Now, um, what we've tried to focus on during the pandemic, actually, is to make sure that our 
reach to the external stakeholders, if I may call them that, or the international bodies, is in a better uh, position. Um, simply because we were continuing the communication with the IMCs, we continued providing the support, we did the uh, different webinars in order to make sure that actually we reach the members of the members and support the IMCs in providing services to them. But we also, on the other hand, um, try to enhance our communication with the external world. Now, we all know that we are uh, a UN um, entity somehow. Uh, we are part of the UN uh, family and, and all our IMCs actually gain that status simply by us maintaining it. So uh, we had our quadrennial report this year. We, uh, we placed it in. Uh, we also tried to put together some papers and provide it to them in their different discussions on the different topics. We have a dedicated task force now working on maintaining and enhancing the relationship with, uh, with the UN in order to maintain our status and in order to be more active in the UN NGO community. So um, it's kind of two tiers, but it is one task force, and we put a lot of effort in that. Also, we enhanced uh, or we actually tried to maintain and enhance the relationship with EBRD simply because um, they are already assisting us with the ISO 20700. They already acknowledged it as part of their um, introductory course. So we're trying to build more on that and to make sure that we continue working with them. Other than that, uh, we were able to enhance our relationships with the EU as well. And that was uh, apparent at the Eurohub meeting when we had, where we had the, their financial director actually speak to all of us. So uh, we tried to work on that regard. Plus, we tried to look into what the future is, keeping in mind all the information that was, ga was, that was gathered during the 2020 task force. So um, it's kind of gaining information from within, but actually working on what the future could be and how the stakeholders, whether internal or external, would be uh, part of it, would enhance um, the status and would actually make us grow and be able to offer more to those who are consultants within our community. So again, 2020, was hard for everyone and like Eric said we all want to erase it from our minds but we cannot we learned from it a lot um 2021 it was somehow a continuation but um we were better prepared so we were able to do things with a more let's say uh open eyes and ears we were better in getting information and listening to what everyone was saying and we were better at uh, providing the support and and maybe even the solutions that were sought of us so this was 2020 2021 uh, this is what we do at icmci we try to always maintain the status of icmci in the international um, uh, from the international perspective and therefore maintain the status of all our imcs thank you and i hope i covered everything and Dwight, if i missed on anything just let me know no no i think that was a great update and we can uh, we can come back as well in the open part of the discussion to uh, uh, if there's anything anybody wants to hear more about. So thank you very much, Rima. Uh, we're going to take a break in a few minutes, but before we do that, we have, I see visitors from two different institutes, uh, Joe Fukuyama from uh, Japan, from the Asia Pacific Hub, and uh, Konstantinos, our friend from, uh, from the uh, IMC USA, who's uh, based in uh, Greece. Uh, Joe, have you any uh, words for us of greetings from uh, Asia Pacific? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Probably I am very far away from your countries. Now it is, uh, I am very sleepy, <laughs> but I can, I can hear your presentation and I can easily understand your situation. Each country has different, each country is, is facing different problem, but mostly we management consultant has have same problem or same challenges. Already I told you we are very far away, but one of my colleague consultant 
of my company, he was, he was staying in Tanzania. Until four years ago, for about three years, to introduce Kaizen to Tanzania country. And the other, our part-time management consultant, he's working in Ethiopia and also Middle East. So we, I have much concern about your situation all over Africa. But very unfortunately, we are very far away, but through this meeting, we can understand your situation. Thank you very much. This is my comment. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. And thank you. You're one of the uh, uh, most steady attenders of all of the different sessions. I'm always happy to see your smiling face, even though it's almost midnight in your country. So thank you. Um, Konstantinos uh, from uh, IMC uh, USA and uh, representing the Americas. Uh, good afternoon from Athens, Greece. That's where I'm currently based. Uh, I'd like to extend our best regards from uh, a board of directors and our members from IMC USA. Uh, it's a pleasure being hosted here at a new, at the new hub, emerging hub. Uh, this is, uh, I'd say, great news because we're actually filling up the white space in another way, so to speak. Uh, I realized that uh, hearing from all of you, I realized that uh, two things. One, that we face, all of, all of our institutes face horizontal challenges, same or similar challenges across the board, as well as vertical challenges, which would be topical or regional. Uh, the second thing I'd like to say is that uh, we tend to uh, look at challenges as I, as I heard, and that was a good twist and try to twist them into opportunities. So I'd like ending my, uh, uh, my words by saying that it's not a matter of seeing the, if, the, uh, if the glass is empty or full, it's always refillable. <laughs> so that's a new opportunity for all of us as Dwight actually mentioned in the beginning to get out of the box. It's a great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Konstantinos. So now we have boxes and glasses, so we're getting widening our horizons. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, this brings us to the halfway mark of, of the session. Um, very, very good presentations, very enlightening, lots to think about, some very serious things, but also optimism and, and some opportunities for the future. I'd like to suggest that we take a, a, a 10 minute break now. So it gives us a chance to uh, stretch a little bit and refresh our, uh, our brains. And then we'll come back. And uh, then the last part of our meeting is, uh, is a round table. So we don't have a fixed agenda. It will be very open. So think about uh, the kinds of uh, issues you would like to raise. Uh, thinking uh, forward, uh, basically, how do we collaborate? What are the kinds of things that we can do together uh, with support from ICMCI to, uh, to extend our reach uh, uh, in the continent and, and to support you in, re in extending your reach within your uh, institutes in your countries as well. So it's uh, 1031, so let's come back at uh, 10. 41, that's my time. Sorry, UTC, I'd have to add four to that, but uh, let's just come back, look at your watch, add 10 minutes, come back, okay? We'll see you in uh, a few minutes. So, uh, so Jordi, uh, why don't I open it up to you? Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for uh, raising your electronic hand. Thank you very much. Uh, my question was to Otto. Um, I don't know if he's... Oh, there oh, he's, he's he is. Oh, there he is. Good. I asked him in the chat and he gave me some answer there, but I think maybe it'd be relevant to everybody. Uh, Otto, in your presentation, you refer to entry level certification. Yes. If you can just tell us what that is about, please. Sure. Um, uh, we are working with two. Let me see. Um, part of the part of the focus of trying to, to provide value to everybody is that uh, in, in general, in most markets, there is uh, a big chunk of, of potential members that are not ready yet to be CMCs. Uh, they are either starting or have, uh, or have 
consulting in their um, in their aspirational uh, objectives, but they're not ready yet. So basically, uh, we are trying to be the pathway to professional management consulting, trying to say to those er to those people, if you want to uh, if you want to develop your own career in a professional manner, according to, stand, to global standards, and eventually be ready for CMC certification, which is like the top of the line, uh, then we have a program that uh, you will get a certification uh, that is, a, that is a, in, in this case, is a branded uh, with a GI and the provider. Uh, we we uh, fetch two providers who already have the content, which is uh, aligned with the uh, ICMCI framework, and we'll um, and we'll update it when uh, when in October the new the new framework is released. They will update the course as well. Um, so it's co-branded in this case, GI and and the provider, and there are two providers because we will have two routes in which you can get that entry level certification, uh, which are basically, uh, there is one part which is a course, then there is another part that is uh, experiential. It could be either uh, an internship type of, or uh, a project under certain circumstances. Uh, and the third would be that they do a project and they need to pitch it professionally in front, in front of a panel uh, to, get, to get critique, uh, to get critique of how to improve uh, and, and what, you know, the, the idea is not to, to give him a path or give him or her a pat in the back, but actually to provide him feedback, uh, the, the, the learner feedback that he can take back to his own development and practice. Um, as I mentioned in the in the in the in the message, uh, that uh, you know, in line with what what I just said, if there is uh, the need for a third uh, for a third logo with your own institute, we could also provide for that, so that uh, you you actually do some branding for your own uh, for your own institute and and strength the brand of your local institute. Uh, through us. Um, the other thing that I said was that, um, let me see, um, and we are currently uh, developing the courses, uh, basically negotiating with both providers because they have the content and they have the, the structure of the course for an impressions type of uh, delivery. So our expertise comes in as how to do it in a hybrid manner. That means some asynchronous, uh, meaning recorded activities, combined with assignments and other things, combined with live uh, presentations in some areas. And depending on, on the content, uh, in the case of the entry level certification, that the idea is that it will be um, like an beyond essentials of management consulting, you know, it's, it's much more practical and you can actually uh, practice on that. How to how to provide the consulting, uh, and then uh, we will probably be able to complement it with ISO and other things. But we're in the process of developing what we call the skeleton of what is exactly that we are going to call the course, like a syllabus. Uh, then we cost it uh, in order to make it as affordable as process as possible, uh, and probably uh, we are working uh, soon to have e-commerce so that people can have it in installments. Uh, that I think for all the, uh, for all the money problems that, that our, all our members are uh, experiencing, the idea is that eventually those programs may not be a one lump sum at the beginning, but rather a monthly payment or something like that, so that it's easier to, to, to make it more affordable. But I, I don't know if I, if I covered everything, Georgie. Thank you very much. Um, it is very important to provide uh, development paths and careers for the management consultants. Uh, we do it with uh, having an associate member to the institute, then a full member, and then you can certify. 
where certify means you are competent. You've matched the competency framework. Um, I'm concerned if we're going to start using the word certified with a junior person, uh, we are battling with uh, the concept with, within our client base that use a certified person. In other words, use a competent person. Let me just add something that yeah. uh, actually uh, Dwight, Dwight was, look, was looking at me because that is precisely one uh, concern that we have. We haven't named it yet. Uh, and we have tried different uh, names, the registered program, but it happens that in the Middle East, registered means uh, something like a registered engineer or something like that, that is uh, accredited somewhere. Uh, so we are trying to find a neutral name that you know that, that you will get a certificate, but that is not that it will not cannibalize the the, the CMC certification. And maybe if I can just cultural jump. difficulty, yes. Yeah. So. yeah, exactly. If I can jump in, Jordi, because I think this is uh, and thank you, Otto. That was a very good overview. Uh, I, I think uh, many uh, and the reason is I want to bring, frame it from the perspective of a number of different institutes around the world that are that are looking at this. So, so it's 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 thinking about it as uh, kind of like the ladder. So, so the ladder is uh, starts with some kind of an affiliation with an institute. So the person might not even be a member yet. I think your associate is is a, a similar example, but they have access to the professional development and and other forms of networking and so on. Uh, then they can become a member, and at the member level, they sign the professional code of conduct. So that's the next level up in terms of qualities qualifications. Um, and then, and then uh, in most institutes, the next step is to become a certified management consultant, which requires quite a bit of experience, the panel and so on. Mm -hmm. So many institutes are identifying that if there were something which is not certified, we, I agree with you, but where, mm -hmm. where there is a, a demonstration of ability to deliver consulting pro projects as a certified, as, as a as a professional management consultant. So ISO 27, uh, 20,700 is part of that. So what is it that one must do? So you could be a student, you could be a new entry to the, uh, to the workforce, <laughs> or you might be someone in the mid career, but you can take educational programs in terms of understanding what, how, how to, how to uh, uh, scope, uh, deliver and uh, close uh, management consulting projects. So it's not certified because you're not, we're not guaranteeing competence, but it is, it is a next step, at least a step on, on the ladder moving forward. And it does give them then the educational background to be ready for the CMC once they have, uh, have the experience and, and can demonstrate that in, in, oral, uh, uh, in oral assessments. Yeah, thank you very much, yes. Uh, I agree, I just don't want to dilute the uh, significance of a CMC by using the word certif certified for mm -hmm. another person, but thank you very much. Well, agreed 100%, Jordi. Thank you very much for pointing that out. Constantinos, you turned your um, microphone on. Did you want to comment on this specifically? Yeah, yeah I just want to say that- Oh, from, Kieran, go ahead. On the IMCSA side, we have another leg of, the, of, of, of potential members that we cater for. And these are the functional area experts, the technical experts, the industry experts, okay, who have their specific set of skills uh, in, in each one of those areas that now want to enter the consulting world. And um, we, we probably would, would accept them either at associate or member level, depending on how senior they are. And then obviously the, 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 the level of or the interval between membership for each one of those three grades will, will be considerably shortened uh, once they go through some of some of the educational material that, that we provide at the, at the institute. But I agree with Jordi, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll come to you and Konstantinos uh, in just one second because Kieran, I think you make a very good point. The, the, the differentiations between the specialties of consulting, management consulting is a more general one, but now a lot of the specialist uh, uh, fields are also 
moving into management consulting and many management consultants are becoming more specialized. So those boundaries are graying. So addressing that is good. And, and Robert, you might want to talk about 17024 uh, in a moment, uh, because I think that is one tool we have to, uh, to address that. Constantino, sorry, you're, you're next. Thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, briefly suggest since we have uh, the PSC, the Professional Standards Committee, and they're doing a great work mm -hmm. in, in even expanding and augmenting our framework, our competency framework. So I would suggest that such, uh, um, such moves to uh, expand into the market and attract more uh, candidates, uh, I strongly suggest that the discussion be held with the PSC so that it's in alignment with our competency framework across the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be, it would not be a good picture if we were talking about ICMCI as a global organization with our institutes, a confederation with our institutes and each and every institute following a different approach. Thank you very much, Constantino. So I agree and, and well noted and, and already accepted. I, I share your viewpoint on that one. Uh, Robert and then uh, and then Otto. Uh, first of all, I would like to respond to Constantinos. Um, I don't know if you know, but I'm the liaison to the PSC, and we do have a lot of discussions in the in the PSC. I think we developed a very good version of the competence framework, as already mentioned in the discussion, the previous discussion, and the new version. It's it's addressing new necessary skills like in digital environment and so on and so forth. Um, but on a certain level, the, the entry level, especially the entry level, I think it should be as low barrier as possible. And that should be something that the IMC is defining based on the, on the environment of the PS, set by the PSC, of course, because if you want to provide a ladder or a growing path, a career path or whatever that ends finally at the CMC level, it must be compatible with that what we develop in the PSC. And that's extremely important. And I think that is something we have to have the flexibility to approach new members and attract new members. And on the other side, we have to be as transparent and, 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 and clarity, uh, clarity for whatever we offer in, in terms of education and certification. And the word certification, as I learned in my ISO uh, experience, that is so different used in the different languages and in the different parts of the world. There are parts of the world where the word certification is, it's, it, it means something totally different because of the history of the culture, of the background. And that's something I, I wasn't aware of. And, and, and we need to be very careful especially on the global level to discuss it about the word certification, but that is the terminus technicus. It is certification. We cannot change it. We need, we, we, we will work with that. And the certified management consultant, the CMC is something that has the word certification and management consulting in it. And I think that's what it is. If we would use the word certification on a lower level, it would be certified junior consultant or certified entry consultant or whatever. And I, I don't think that would be as attractive as we want to be. <laughs> no. Uh, so it, it shouldn't be something just, then, then it's better to leave the word cert certificate or whatever. It's it's just management consult. No, no, I wouldn't call it. I would call, call it something like expert or whatever. Now coming back to what uh, Dwight was, uh, um, mentioning it's it's about 17 or 24. Um, I don't know if all of you are aware of that 17 or 24 is something that is um, as an ISO standard that is on behalf of how uh, how are the institutes working with regards to certification on a personal level. And we offer the accreditation for these institutes on the global level. So, um, the best would be CMC plus other what is called programs in the 17 or 24, because that uh, gives the, the, the funding partner, that was a wording some one of you used at the introduction at the beginning, to approach the funding partner to, to give them uh certainty and, and transparency. What is the organization? It's not the, the IMC 
with whatever country might not be as well known for every funding partner or every other stakeholder in the industry. So it helps you to, to give transparency to, to, uh, to your partners, to your stakeholders, to show this is not a certificate or an education we provide for our members that is just coming out of our mind. It is on international standardized level and it fulfills requirements on ISO level. And that should lever all your programs. It's it's basically meant for CMC, but I know, and as I can uh, inform you from from Austria perspective, in Austria, more almost all of the certifications are listed as a program, and you have to run through the certification process for every single program. But once you have the first program certified or accredited, I'm sorry, <laughs> using the word again wrong. Uh, it's rather easy to uh, accredit new courses. And that is something that gives additional benefit for your members because your members have a certificate that meets international requirements. And that is something that helps them to have uh, a better position on the market. And that is something that they can distinguish from people who are just entering the market and say, now I'm a management consultant and bad luck for you, you're my first client. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's, that's something we need to compete. That's, that's one of our main tasks. This is why, why we are here. Exactly. So if Thank you are you interested support. in 17 or 24, just give me a message or give it to Olga directly and, and uh, to Rima, to anybody, and then we can inform you in detail what does it mean for you. This this is something I think that is getting increased performance. And Namrod, I saw you put up your hand, so I'll come back to you in, in just one second. Oops, I think we lost him. Oh, there you are. Uh, no, nope, nope. uh, he must have uh, <laughs> he must have lost connection. So anyway, when when he reconnects, I'll I'll get back to him. Um, what wh what's been happening in in as a result, largely I think of of the. Uh, of the pandemic, but it's been starting to move in that direction is that uh, what I was talking about with access to knowledge has spread from asking Google something to uh, to the, the the broad availability of, uh, of uh, online training. So webinars, uh, free courses and so on. So that is really becoming commoditized. So our ability as institutes to provide professional development and charge for it is becoming eroded because why would they pay 25 euros or $25 to attend an online training program when you can search and find three or four alternatives that are, are free or, or, or next to free. And from the per perspective of the individual that's looking for the training, they want the knowledge. They don't necessarily want to get it from any particular service provider. So, so the, the concept of, of a global standard of certification, if you take this course, you are certified according to a global standard becomes increasingly important for institutes to be able to validate and provide value added services to, to clients. So I, I, I applaud uh, the work of, um, of Robert and his group and, and PSC to, to really ensure that, uh, I guess it's QAC more, to really the Quality Assurance Committee to really ensure that this is available. So if, if for example, instead of teaching courses about uh, digital transformation, if you have a certified digital transformation expert coming out of the end of it, and that's a real certificate that has the same validity as the CMC, that's much more attractive to the marketplace than, than a 10 hour course and, uh, and, um, and, and um, uh, you know, in an interview or whatever that might be. Uh, so anyway, I was trying to fill in a little time here until uh, Namrod came back on. So maybe he had a power failure or whatever. Uh, Otto, you're next. Oh, there he is. Uh, Namrod is Namrod here. is with us. N Namrod's back now. Hi, I, you must have lost connection there for a moment. I saw your hand okay. up and then okay, your then. face wasn't there. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think I just wanted to echo the same sentiment that I think it would be important that whatever... Um, CMC Global is going to come up with, I think it needs to go through PS, um, uh, the Provincial Standards Committee, because we had a very interesting situation uh, when we approached the certification body, you know, in the country here. And when we're negotiating with the tertiary institutions, th there are certain guidelines, you know, that are required to say, for one to qualify for this, you need X number of hours. Mm -hmm. And I think it should be something like that, which will help us, I think, in terms of if somebody comes with a qualification from somewhere, whether we should accept it or not, 
because there must be a benchmark somewhere. And by going through the peer, you know, the public standards committee would be a very good thing because that will set the benchmark to say whoever wants to do that, you know, that is the, it will it will be accepted right across the globe. So I just wanted to echo the fact that I think whatever we do, you know, if we've got a new course, I think that should be sanctioned by the you know standards committee. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Otto, uh, you've been waiting patiently. No, oh, I, I just uh, I just wanted to, um, uh, I think, two questions, uh, two, two items, but I think I forgot one. Let, let me, uh, let me um, say first uh, that another, another uh, public that is interesting to, to tackle that um, I know I, I'm in debt with, uh, with Dwight on that uh, is that, for example, in our experience, the clients don't know how to, uh, how to uh, contract consulting. They're terrible, are contracting consulting. So uh, with ISO, we also are developing uh, two more versions that are not ready yet. And uh, that I'm, I'm the one uh, in debt with, uh, with that. But we are developing, along with Dwight, of course, um, a shorter, um, a shorter ISO 2700 for clients, for executive clients, so that they learn how to, you know, what are the things that they need to be concerned when when talking to their to their preferred consultant, you know, what are the items that they need to ask for. Um, that's one thing, and the other one. Yeah, which is longer and it's more uh, aimed at the uh, procurement officers in companies. So that uh, we will uh, of course have ISO, but we will have also other, um, you know, it's a procurement course. So, uh, so, so that it will deal with uh, the procurement strategy management, et cetera, that you as a, as a category manager in procurement need to, you know, how to handle the consulting category. Um, so th those two, hopefully, will be ready by the end of the year too. Um, and I, I, I forgot the other one, but I, I just wanted to say that uh, we are struggling very, uh, very hard to come up with a, with a name uh, that that is not uh, that is not disaligned with what you all have said, and that of course. It needs to be completely aligned with the uh, with the with the standard of ICMCI. Thank That's you very it. much. Um, the um, I, I, I haven't mentioned, but I see everyone is using the chat to uh, to ask questions and to have side discussions, and I encourage that uh, you know because. Uh, um, our, our minds are able to move faster than the speed of, of speaking. So if uh, there's any questions you have uh, for people while they occur, feel free to use the chat. And I say that because Namrod raised a question just before the break about uh, us talking a bit more about the uh, UN NGO family and how institutes can be involved and, uh, and participate. I'm not the best one to speak about that. I was going to ask Soren, but he had to slip off uh, uh, during the break. I'm not sure if he's able to come back or not. Rima, are you, uh, do you feel confident to say a few words about that? I'll do my best. Okay, um, Namrud, remember when I talked about the UN, it was a two tier thing. One was us maintaining our status in order to make sure that we maintain that status for our IMCs as well. But the other two was us increasing our work and volunteering with the UN NGO entity. There is an entity that is called Co-NGO and uh, we are part of it, we're a member of it. And at that entity, what they do is they have the different um, NGOs talk to each other, communicate with each other and learn from each other. Okay, um, they do that through committees and many of those committees are committees that address uh, the sustainable development goals of, of the UN. So um, 
for example, if I want to give an example of one of the uh, committees that they have, um, one had to has to do with education, the other one has to do with a sustainable environment, the other has to do with uh, the water supply, some have to do with uh, working children and, and, and addressing that, but the few that are of interest to us are actually the ones about the uh, development, about the economic development. Um, if you want, I mean, what we did is that we named uh, a person to be the representative of ICMCI on, on those committees. We haven't yet heard from the uh, Congo, but once we do, we will ask if there are still more um, opportunities for our members to also be involved. Now, what, what you can do is actually go in look into how you can introduce your members to those. It's not about just volunteering. It's about a full uh, slate of NGOs that work on those development goals and would need consultants in order to do that. So it's mostly that that offers business opportunities to your members, uh, collaborative uh, kind of uh, opportunities for you as an IMC. And what I would do, Dwight, is when we send out the information about this meeting, I will include the links and maybe uh, everyone can look more into what the other UN NGOs are doing. Um, those are a full field of opportunity whether again at the level of the IMC for you to be able to cooperate with them and, and maybe offer uh, information for knowledge and, and, and build relationships there, but also uh, to offer what your consultants and, and your members uh, can do in order to support them. Some would definitely be for volunteering, others it would be about business opportunities, but again, it's a field that maybe we should all look into together. Wonderful, excellent. Thank you very much for that update. And the idea of sending the links around is, is really important. Robert, I see you there. And, and I see there's a couple of people that haven't had a chance to speak yet, maybe three. So I'll, I'll give you each an opportunity if you want to say a few words to the group when I come back. Uh, Rob, uh, over to you. Just want to add a few words to what Rima mentioned, because we, we already do that with EBRD, for example. And EBRD is not the United Nations organization, but it's a global, it's, well, more or less global organization, and it is quite active also in the African area. And on global level, we also are in touch with uh, UNESCO and we already <laughs> invited them. And unfortunately for, uh, for just operational reason, they couldn't join the, the, the consultancy team because I think on global level, it's, 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 it's the task of ICMCI to get in touch with global organizations. But what, and it might be helpful for uh, on, on, on the hub, on the African hub level, that we as ICMCI get in touch because it is it, it might be useful to get in touch together with representatives from your area, and if uh, that's something we might discuss because donors, stakeholders on on this level, I learned actually that they are very happy if they get in touch with an organization like ICMCI. It's it's they don't refuse. On the other side, they are very happy. They they want to know us and they see ICMCI as a quality label. And that gives business opportunity to your members. Thank you, thank you very much. So uh, who hasn't had a chance uh, to, uh, to address our colleagues here? Uh, Doot, uh, Doubt, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry, I see it written for the first time. No, no, it's okay, I'm just following uh, Craig. Uh, I don't have anything to contribute at the moment, but uh, just following the procedure. Okay, thank you very much. I really appreciate your being here and, and uh, participating. Thank you very much. Uh, Mode uh, Modesta, are you able to uh, talk? Have you got a microphone today? Yeah, I do have a microphone. Um, no, <laughs> no, no, I'm just standing in, um, in support of the Zambian group and just to learn what else we can do to, 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 to make progress forward. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. your spending your time with us today. It's a long thank time you. since we've had an opportunity to chat. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
So, uh, so we've had one interesting discussion then around uh, uh, um, sort of the ladder of, uh, of, of uh, from entry level and uh, the professional development of, of members. I, I think that is interesting. We've got some really good feedback from you as well on that. Uh, what, what are some of the other thoughts that some of you might have about uh, how we might collaborate uh, more deeply as we, as we move forward or, or expand into other parts of Africa? How's that for an open question? I just wanted to do a commercial, Dwight. Mm -hmm. um, we in the Americas Hub are trying to push uh, the same that you are doing in Africa in Latin America for Spanish speaking uh, consultants. Uh, in the case of Africa, I think the only country that speaks Spanish as the, as the main language is the Equatorial Guinea. Uh, so if anyone knows anyone in Equatorial Guinea, please uh, tell them to, to get in contact with me uh, as, as, as we are trying to get Spanish speaking, uh, um, how do you call this, um, uh, critical mass uh, in order to start uh, moving ahead. And, 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 I, and I would be delighted to include them. Thank you very much. Who's next? Go ahead, Namrod, please. Okay. Um, we have got very few members of SMCI now, and we are such a big continent. And obviously, it worries some of us that, you know, I think we've been like this for quite some time. And uh, I think it's a very good thing that we have started this hub because that helps in terms of being able to see what we can do to be able to help the other countries that are in there. Now, Africa is divided into regions. There's, this, there's SADC, which has got its own secretariat. There's the Eastern African region. There's the West African region. And then the, we've got AU. Now, I'm not sure, this is just a question. Um, take, taking an example of how we went through uh, to become members of ICMCI. The management consultant group in Zimbabwe is actually 29 years this year, 29 years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the you know, ICMCI has been there for a very long time, but they did not have knowledge that there was the existence of ICMCI. It was coincidental that some of us are fortunate because maybe we, we actually stayed in, you know, in England sometimes. So we, we, we had knowledge that there was something like that. And we, we helped in terms of making sure that there is a professional institute rather than an association. So we converted an association into a professional institute, purely because of the few people who knew that there was ICMCI. Now, way forward, um, I think it would be good to do it from a regional level. So that at least I think we are able to help the countries that are within that region. Like, you know, in West Africa, there's also Nigeria and Algeria, and then there's North Africa. And that way, I think it makes it much easier because we've got an umbrella body, which is like AU, which is like EU, which is AU. And I was very fortunate to meet one of the executives at AU at some function. And we talked about it. Funny enough, they were quite interested that, you know, I think it would be good. And then I said, well, maybe at some point in time, we've got ISMCI, who could be able to be instrumental in terms of it. So I, I, think, I, I think the interest is there, but it's just a way of how we are able to reach some of these other countries. And, and, and my suggestion is that maybe if we can do it from a regional point of view, uh, to say the countries that are nearby, you know, conscientize them, and based on that, and maybe have these regular meetings, I think it will go a long way in terms of covering those areas that are white at the moment in Africa. So my question is, uh, just to make sure that there is no conflict between what ISMCI does and what the I, IMC does. Uh, 
I think we need a police on that. <laughs> I think we need a police on that. Just make sure that I think there's no conflict. You know, to say who does what. But I think I'm sure we all agree that I think we need to to make sure that those white areas, you know, <laughs> you know, get the right color. Yeah. <laughs> I don't okay. know. It's just a question, just a broad question I'm asking. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, I think it's a very good question. I'd be interested in in the opinions of others as well. And you know, from my perspective, um, I think um, just as I mentioned that the boundaries between professions is is starting to uh, to blur. So is the boundaries between countries <laughs> starting to blur simply because uh, the uh, the barriers to uh, working cross border are being removed in terms of being able to move money, professionalism of consultants, forums such as this. Clients are getting more and more used to uh, working virtually, and they're beginning to realize that since uh, they're getting their support virtually from the consultant, they don't need to necessarily hire only a consultant within their country. They can they can find that expertise anywhere in the world uh, at the price that they're they're willing to pay. So I think uh, along your point, Namrod, we we need to think about what are the kind of economic and political uh mechanisms that have put it in place and how can we leverage those in in different ways so um so um I'm, I'm not sure where that takes us i just think we need to keep an open mind and ask the kinds of questions that you have been asking and and the the policy that you talk about between icmc and institutes is absolutely necessary we need clarity it's it's not a competition uh, our, our 60 000 members is pretty good on paper but it needs to be a million members around the world or maybe two million members so we need to have a significant percentage of those who are practicing consulting uh, be registered uh, with us so so it's not a question of um, of competition for members it's how do we help each other to ensure that more and more people are joining the profession and we're building this critical mass in different ways and and we don't want to stumble over each other in doing that so let's uh let's have us these kinds of meetings and 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 total transparency around how, how how we can do it but i i think there is stuff we can do from icmci to help institutes in in different ways and we need to start getting creative about that uh, other other comments on on uh, Namrod's point, or, or Namrod, you might want to expand a little bit. Kieran, I'll go to you first. I think just to add to Namrod's uh, point, um, I think the key in all of us is to have recognition uh, of the CMC consultant, certified consultant, um, have or be recognised having a certain level of professionalism and obviously the skills and competencies to do what they say they do okay um in terms of 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 the um, various bodies namrod has referred to um au SEDEC, and various economic blocks etc cetera, etc cetera, i think the only useful function from my perspective that they would form is if they recognize the CMC consultant as a preferred consultant in all of their projects, including the African Development Bank and other, and other, other institutions that operate in, in this part of the world. Um, and I think um, the, obviously the same kind of comment would, would apply to the United Nations. I mean, it would be absolutely brilliant if the United Nations says that, listen, um, we would love to have consultants participate in our projects, but we would give preference to those who are certified and recognized by a professional body. And a similar kind of, of, of sentiment would apply to um, you know, the AU, African Union, um, SADC, and if, if those people say that, you know, we give preference to certified consultants who have been certified to have a certain level of, of, of competency in their area of expertise and are recognized internationally. That would give a real differential impetus in terms of attracting members to our, our, our various institutes. And I think that's, that's where the real difference will, would come in. 
I mean, we've been trying that for a very long time in the public sector in South Africa to have um, the public sector consultants be certified um, by us uh, and to be recognized as having a certain level of professionalism and, and skill to participate in, in, in public sector projects. Um, but we have not been able to get that right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Joe? First of all, thank you very much for all of you to share valuable time with me. And uh, Otto, thank you very much for your logical presentation. I think uh, focusing on entry level is very important. I think I completely agree. And for example, in Asia, uh, Asian countries, CMCs are becoming older, older, older and older, year by year. For example, Japan, Korea, China, and Taiwan, management consultant, CMCs becoming older and older. So focusing on younger generation or entry level is very important. Educate and develop them is very important. For example, in Japan, it is said there are about 1,000 CMCs, but all of us are becoming older and older. And under this COVID-19 situation, like me, uh, experienced management consultant have still very good client, but younger generation not experienced consultant don't have good client and losing their jobs. So focusing on and educate them, younger generation entrance management consultant is very important. So develop them and educate them. Thank you very much. This is my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Eric? Uh, th thanks very much. Um, just in line with um, the discussions that we have in this um, evening uh, uh, from Kenya, um, other areas will be morning or very late in the night, is that we are looking at sustainability of the IMCs or the, the instrument management consultants. And um, going by what we have seen so far, um, I've had uh, discussions in the earlier earlier on uh, with Rima on what steps do we need uh, in order for us to be approved as formal members of uh, ICMCI. And I know and appreciate the fact that uh, there has to be a bit of quality assurance and just making sure that we actually fit the bill, uh, which is very much in order. I think that that, that, that first uh, process is very important. The next question is, uh, in terms of the African countries, and because of uh, the low numbers of enrollment, uh, the sources of income, um, can we really sustain um, the annual fees that uh, are being uh, that we pay uh, to, to, for us to to remain as members of um, ICMCI? And it, it's a question that I think if um, addressed, a majority of the African countries may want to. Uh, uh, really join ICMCI and the movement uh, can be big. And I think it will be uh, a matter of, uh, I think uh, it's a discussion that should be held at the board in my own opinion on how then do we um, ensure that we also consider Africa as part of um, the, great, the greater movement of ensuring that all over the world, what number is calling the white, we can paint it yellow or a different color. And it's only because we think of inclusive policies of ensuring that the uh, countries that join ICMCI do not fall off because of unpaid dues. And I can tell you a very good example, uh, members here, is that, um, for example, when Uganda, 
heard that Kenya, we already are uh, working towards becoming members of ICMCI. Um, a, a lot of consultants across the border reached out and asking us, can we then become members through you? And we told them we are not even members yet. We are heading there. Uh, we need to develop ours, but you can actually become uh, a, an affiliate or an associate through Kenya, but you can also go directly. So we have had discussions and, um, and thanks for the guidance I get from uh, my seniors here. Um, I still feel that uh, that is something that uh, needs to be tabled and discussed for to ensure our sustainability as members, but also to expand across Africa. Because I'm looking at um, the number of African countries are already members. I'm not so sure if uh, South Africa is surviving well. I mean, South Africa has gone also through economic um, hardship over the years. And we understand that without proper membership base that actually pay, um, you can hardly survive to sustain yourself. Uh, I, my office or my company or host at the moment, host um, MCA, Management Consultant Association of Kenya. I use my own resources um, to, to, to run some of the things. For sustainability, um, I, I do actually honestly feel that even though we have the dream, our, our biggest dream actually, um, and I think that's the only legacy I leave for this country and the consultants in this country, is that we become part of the global body. But I would not want us to join and then immediately drop off because of the sustainability issues. That's one. Number two, um, we need, um, as, um, as a young um, country, as a young group of consultants, we need a helping hand from our seniors who have walked the path. Um, they have actually uh, been in this uh, running of the Institute for quite some time to also work with us and help us. Uh, thanks to Angelo, I think Angelo has been very helpful. Um, he's become more of a personal friend and um, once in a while, when you ask him a, a question of, we are having this webinar, could you please just join us to, uh, to help us spread the word? He's always been there for us. Um, and I think uh, Constantinus, we also discussed a little bit on how we can run um, some, some webinars uh, around just to create awareness. And I, I thank that and I, and I thank them for that. But however, I think that um, many of the, the institutes should also come up more so for the African hub to lend a hand because they have done it. They've been there for quite some time. And if a program can be drawn on how to support this part of the world in terms of now spreading the word, because personally, out of curiosity, I came to know about ICMCI. I don't know how many guys uh, or how many people would want to see a problem and then go to find out, is there a solution to this? Because if you spread the word, we get a lot of um, awareness sessions then of the world will know about ICMCI, and I think we'll have so many consultants uh, thinking and delivering in a, in, a, in a structured way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Kieran? I, I agree with Eric completely. Um, I mean, given the background I sketched earlier from a sustainability point of view, um, South Africa is also having great difficulty. And being one of the oldest institutes on the continent, it would be a pity if, if, if we had to um, not, not, no longer be part of this, of this community. Um, I think we need to very seriously think about how we address the issue of financial sustainability. Um, um, I had a brief chat with Angelo before he went off during the break. And um, I think in I think we are we are actually looking at possibly making an arrangement and we'll come up with a proposal with the ICMCI regarding our dues, um, especially for a short term, maybe for a year or two or three. Um, I think we need to we need to seriously look at that. Um, yeah, I think I think Eric has has hit the head, nail on the head. I mean, we've raised this issue with with ICMCI before, um, but you know we have to work out a way in which we can address this practically. Thanks. 
Yes. Robert? Nope, nope. <laughs> I thought you saw the finger. Uh, thank you, Kieran and and Eric both. And 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 this is this is an underlining of an issue that uh, that we know is uh, is is very important. And it, it does come down between uh, the balance of how do you run a global organization that supports uh, institutes around the world and find up with a fair and equitable way of um, of uh, how those institutes uh, support. Um, um, sort of the, the, the global effort, uh, but without uh, being too much of a burden on the ability of the uh, Institute to carry that forward. So, so there's no question that it's an issue. And with South Africa, we have an ongoing discussion and even some letters going back and forth. And I know, I know we're waiting uh, with anticipation for your, uh, for your answer uh, from your board, uh, Kieran. So, uh, so, uh, so we take this to heart. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not a, a clear and easy solution, but uh, we're all uh, uh, good minds, and I think by working together, we can find the right path forward. Uh, I've got Namrod and then Konstantinos. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I think one, one lesson that we managed to learn from this whole thing is the issue of networking. And uh, South Africa was very helpful to us. We, we could have become a member of ICF a long time ago, but we did not want to rush that. Uh, initially, we were with the UK for two years when ICMCI was still based in London. And from there, we moved to South Africa. And, and, and again, that relationship that we had with the two institutes made it to be what we are today. Uh, so. The issue of network support, I think, is important for those that have been there. Uh, obviously, issues are different from one country to the other, but but obviously, when you are starting something, you you need to do a bit of a scan to say, okay, fine, what will be suitable for your own country? Because those those these these issues differ. Initially, we were struggling with you know you know with funding, but then we realized that no, hold on. I think we're not reaching enough in terms of the number of people that are interested. In the moment we started doing that, the whole thing opened up. But but again, coming up with a, with a, with a strategic plan of how you want to do it will go a long way. And I mentioned the aspect of the canvas. I don't know whether you will allow me just maybe for a second. Uh, I think I've got a you know it, it's just a, you know it is just a pager, you know we you know which I can show you what we did of the various things that we need to do, and then put that into, to say year one, this is what I'm going to do, year two, this is what I'm going to do, year two, this is what I'm going to do, till the whole thing comes together. And as a result, that's why, you know, that's why we are in a position that we are in at the moment. What we did was, um, is to look at a number of areas which we which came in into our roadmap to say identify who are our key partners and what sort of key activities do you want to have next one here yeah, we saw the business we see the business model canvas now yes okay so so we are saying we're looking at the key partners we went through that and say these are the people we actually drew that, you know, a, you know, a, you know, as a, as a actual business club, you know, model, and then based on each one of those columns, then now we'll say, okay, fine, year one, what is it that we are going to do? Okay, if we can look at that. Yes, better. Oh, okay, key activities, the value propositions, customer relationships customer segment, key resources that are required, governance issues, channels, the cost is trying, you know, costing of issues, and then revenue. And then now drew up, came up with now the budget for this. So we managed to plan this over maybe two, three year period, building up to be where we are today. So in a way, we find that now, uh, that has helped us in terms of being able to maintain the numbers 
or even actually increasing. And if it's going well, as I mentioned, uh, we are opening up chapters right now. The first one that we did, the first meeting with 25 people, and I'm certain that maybe out of those 25, we'll possibly get at least 10, you know, which will add up to you know, the numbers that we've got at the moment. And, and again, we've, 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 we've gone through you know, those stakeholders, which we are following through. So, so in a way, uh, I, I think we would not have managed to do this if it was not of South Africa and actually UK. So network with those that are near you will go a long way in terms of being able to learn from what they've done well, the pitfalls that they've gone through, so that we are in a position to be able to avoid them. Uh, and, uh, and I would like to thank Kiran and Angelo. I mean, they were fantastic in terms of maybe helping us. Remember, in, in, in 2013, we came to South Africa, we're not even members. But we waited, we said, no, we're not going to rush this. <laughs> but they helped us to be where we are today. So, so our, the point I want to, under, to just underscore is the issue of networking both from a regional point of view and also globally. Uh, you know, we, we, we do, I mean, Rima, thank you so much. I mean, for the number of advice that you've given us, those webinars, we do attend all of those. Again, it's a way of trying to find out how we can be able to utilize lots of those. So to our colleagues that are, you know, that are still not yet members, I think I would say, yes, I think you can network with us, ask whatever you need, I think be able to help. But obviously, at the end of the day, it is a decision, you know, of that or you know, of that particular kind of which way they want to do it. That's what I want to just underscore. Thank you, thank you, Namrod. Um, Konstantinos. Uh, yes, thank you, Dwight. Uh, building up on uh, everything that uh, was said by my African colleagues, uh, I noticed the following thing that, uh, and it was actually. Uh, put on the table that uh, uh, Africa would like some help from the other regions. So this sparked on the following idea. Instead of having only an, an African hub once a year, as every other hub, come up with uh, uh, quarterly special hubs, connecting hubs. For example, one, one uh, special hub could be connecting Africa with the Americas. Another mm -hmm. one would be connecting Africa with uh, Europe. And a third one would be connecting Africa with Asia. That would give an opportunity for uh, institutes that have actually walked the path to reciprocate and uh, help our African institutes and institutes to be to actually color the white space. And the second thing would be, I'm sure, I'm sure that all my African colleagues between them are in constant communication, probably make officials some uh, something like uh, monthly monthly meetings between the institutes. Share your uh, challenges, your opportunities instead of you know just uh, calling whenever something comes up. That's what we used to do uh, a few years back. But now, uh, especially vis-a-vis -vis the, the pandemic, uh, communication, as Dwight said, and camaraderie has actually gone to the next level. Mm -hmm. So it's not about you know when I need something, just pick up the phone or, or call, call somebody, but regularize, schedule, schedule, frequent meetings, and take it to the next level. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Constantinos. I'd like to build on that a little bit because uh, I, I, I love the direction of that comment. And, and I wonder if, if we might even take that more to the global level and, and think about special interest groups that we could build on globally. And it doesn't have to be once a month, maybe once every two months, but we pick topic areas and create working sessions around them. So one around uh, this uh, entry level, uh, sort of the first step on the ladder 
uh, we, I'm trying very hard not to call it entry level certification program, but an entry level registered consultant of some kind, or we have another one on uh, on um, university students and how do we uh, how do we engage university students and get them aware of what it is to be a consultant. Uh, I don't know. We could have come up with a dozen topics. I'm sure in in, in two minutes, and and once we name that, let's have a two hour session, which is where it's a working session where an institute somewhere in the world that is excelling at that particular area can give us a little workshop and then we can talk about how we might uh, implement that so so uh so it's not kind of one thing for um for all all institutes in in any particular hub but right around the world we can join uh so anyway uh, I, I love the idea of constantinus and it sparked that idea in me and maybe somewhere between the two or maybe both uh, might be something that we can do as as we move forward so it's kind of the next level of of what rima and josema have done so well in terms of those monthly webinars that they're putting on now so we're down to our last 10 minutes uh i've, I've found this discussion to be very enlightening um uh, I, I take your comment, Constantinos, of the of the glass half full or glass empty. It's opportunity, so we do have some challenges. Uh, the point I would like to to reinforce is that every institute uh, all around the world uh, is facing issues right now. So it's 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 no one is growing as quickly as they would like to, except perhaps our colleagues in Austria, where they do have the regulated <laughs> profession. But even so there, they would like to see more certified members and they would like to see other 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 ways. So so they would like to have different types of growth. So all of us are facing issues. And this is because of the global direction and, and and the changes that we're facing as societies in terms of what I mentioned at the beginning, the access to knowledge, uh, the, uh, the the breaking down of the professions uh, and uh, and the ability to network in different ways. So so we we uh, we need to uh, sort of look under the rock and see what our problem areas are so that we can identify what are the things that we can do to uh, to to refill that glass in terms of what are the opportunities we have to really engage those who feel that they're consultants but don't don't affiliate with us and how do we create our value proposition so that so that we can build our organization because if if we're thriving uh, global organization with thriving institutes and we had even 30% of consultants in each country um, being members uh, 30 you know uh, membership dues and fees would not be an issue the issue would be how do we invest these in the best way because we would have uh, we would have sufficient critical mass so we've got to solve that problem that fundamental problem of how do we attract and retain uh, the new entrance into into consulting to become part of our, our global network and and uh, that they associate through uh, through consult so we do have a task force that's reporting to us at our annual meeting i'm hoping we'll get some insights there uh, but all of us working together i think can solve these problems uh, but let's not uh, try to solve the problems 50 separate times uh, each of us working in our own individual institutes trying to solve the problem let's collaborate and find mechanisms such as Constantinus uh, suggested or that, uh, you know, an alternative that I had or whatever we come up with, which will be probably much better once all the minds come together. So, uh, so those are the closing comments. I, it's, it's just a message of hope and optimism. I, I you know, in, 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 the, in the past 18 months, um, with, with the desperation we felt in the early months of COVID, I've seen the institutes come together and, 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 be flexible and be nimble and do different things to support their members in different ways. And, and, and I just know that uh, by collaborating and working together, we can, uh, we can overcome this, but we've got to keep at it and it's going to be hard work, but uh, we can get there. So I, I open the floor for any closing comments anyone else wants to, uh, to make about the, about the hub structure, about this meeting, uh, or about how we, uh, how we might collaborate going forward. I'd be very interested in general opinions. Eric, you first. Um, thank, thanks so much, Chair. I think um, from Kenya, we really do appreciate um, the invitation to join. Um, as being no members, uh, the consideration to have us on board is really appreciated. I was just telling the team members I'm going to join a global body that, uh, oh, you've traveled the world. And I think virtually, yes, I've traveled the world. And thank you so much. I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. Appreciate that. Okay, uh, Rima, any closing comments from the Secretariat? I just wanted to say thank you. 
thank you for joining us. Thank you for all the thoughts, the ideas. Um, challenges are there at the level of the IMC, at the level of the ICMCI, and it's, it is a challenging world that we are in. But I know from the experience that I've had and gained working with all of you is that we actually prevail. We know how to. Uh, we we are the ones who actually provide the tools to everyone. So we have the tools, we have the knowledge, we only need to not despair. So that's the final note. We'll keep on working together. Um, please reach out to the Secretariat at any time you need. Uh, anything that needs clarification or if information is needed or even just to vent out, just mm -hmm. reach out to me. Uh, I'm there for you. I know that Khuzaima is there for you. I know that the ICMCI is there for you. So uh, let's continue the communication. Uh, I know that too many of the thoughts that were put on the table are there on my notepad. <laughs> I know that Dwight took notes as well. And I know that we will be thinking, and actually the board at the level of the ICMCI will be thinking of all of this and um, we'll continue the hub. It doesn't have to be once a year and uh, we will continue to communicate that is a promise but as long as it is reciprocated so con communicate with us as well please okay thank you very much and yes Rima I do I have uh, almost 11 full pages of notes in the, and uh, we have the recording luckily so when I, I find something interesting that I can't read we can go back to the recording <laughs> and translate so thank you all I, I uh, it, it's been a really important session to me to to hear from all of you and yes there's some hard messaging but uh, you were you were very straightforward and I appreciate that Rima would you mind taking a snapshot of us that we could put on our social media to to uh, uh, to uh, have our uh, faces on our uh, social media talking about this uh, this important meeting. Sure, but two requests. Mm -hmm. Number one, if I may ask everyone to stop sending messages because it would cover uh, Colada's <laughs> face actually in this case. Mm -hmm. And Modesta, would you be able to put on your camera or should I take the photo without that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <we> you. <laughs> okay, let's put on a smile, everyone, please. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for your uh, sincerity and your transparency. I appreciate it. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you.